as we sing together how great God is and he is a good God to us.
Hello, brothers and sisters. Today is the last day of our virtual service. 
We're not canceling YouTube, however. We will have some exciting new content coming soon that we cannot wait to share with you. For more information, please check us out on our website at dfwchurch.org. Good morning, and welcome to our virtual service today. My name is Jeff Smith, and I am honored to be sharing the message with all of you. Since the pandemic began, many churches, like us, made the switch to YouTube. And let me tell you, the switch was not as easy as we thought it would be. In a very real sense, we had to learn to preach again. But this time, it was from a virtual pulpit. We made lots of mistakes during this transition, but by the grace of God, and because of an amazing editing team, we were able to move forward and preach the word. One person I want to make special mention of that helped us more than anyone else is our dear sister, Renee Young. Her heart to help us, teach us, and be more patient with us than we probably deserve allowed us to communicate God's word in a clear and concise manner. We want to make sure she knows that we are grateful for her. I remember the first lesson I did for the virtual service was not something that I was used to. I dressed way fancier than I've ever did for our Sunday services in Denton. And I remember spending quite a few minutes in makeup because it takes a while for this face to be presentable to the public. But then I did one last thing before we got started. I started to empty everything out in my pockets. And for some reason, that day I felt like I was just carrying a lot of things. I remember removing my keys and, and I took my sunglasses off that were hanging from my shirt. I took my wallet out of my pocket along with my phone and my headphones. I went back in my pocket and found a few loose receipts and a random hair tie that I happened to be holding for one of my daughters. I don't know why I remember this, but I just remember thinking, I'm carrying a lot of stuff. And I knew psychologically that I would not be able to do what was being asked of me if I kept all this stuff on my person. Spiritually speaking, it's very difficult for us to focus on what Jesus wants us to do when we're busy holding on to a lot of distractions. And these distractions can come in many different forms. Maybe it's that our lives have become overly busy and God has started to take a back seat. Maybe there's a great deal of sin in your life and you're having trouble seeing a healthy perspective of God. Or maybe you're dealing with different levels of grief and you're having trouble feeling God's love on a regular basis. We all have times in our lives where we struggle to see God because our current situations have obstructed our views. And when those things happen, it can be easy to go to dark places and become insecure with the places that God is leading you. So, for our time today, I want to look at a few different things that can help us when we get to these places. The title of my lesson is, Let Go and Let God. Our message this morning will be coming out of the book of Luke. I know I'm supposed to say this about every book in the Bible, but Luke is a fantastic book. It helps me get a snapshot of what life was like during the days of Jesus. One reason for this is that Luke makes a careful effort to organize the events chronologically. In Luke chapter 5, we notice that Jesus is calling his first disciples. He performs a miraculous catch of fish, and from that point forward, the disciples were hooked. Moving forward, Jesus began to preach and teach and heal, showing love to the people he interacted with and setting an example for the disciples to learn from. What's interesting to me is that the disciples don't really start contributing to the work until Luke chapter 9. Jesus had spent a great deal of time showing them what it looked like to be a disciple of his before sending them out to go and do likewise. And I believe this is an important lesson for all of us to understand. If we're hoping to have everything figured out after just spending a minimal amount of time with Jesus, 
we're going to end up a bit frustrated than we were before. Walking with God takes patience and a willingness to learn from the examples that Jesus already set. So this is the setting going into the passage we are about to read. Let's begin. Luke chapter 9 in verse 1. It says, When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them the power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. When I read this passage, I imagine a scene where Jesus has sent out word to all his disciples that there is going to be a meeting. Each of them was at their own home with their families and they got this message that Jesus needed them, so they came running. Now remember, up until this point, Jesus was doing the heavy lifting. He comforted those in knees and healed the sick as they came to him. The disciples were merely onlookers to the power of the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus tells them, it's your turn to start doing the things I have been doing. You will now preach the message I have been preaching while driving out demons and curing diseases. Personally, I would have loved to have been a fly on that wall for that meeting. Jesus tells them they will now be able to do what he has been doing. I wonder how they would have responded. Actually, what I'm really curious about is how each of their families responded when they came home and told them the news. I can only imagine a conversation between Peter and his wife Abigail going something like this. Who knows how it all played out, but I do know that Jesus had given them something they had never had before, a way to help people in ways they could have never imagined. When I think about our purpose as disciples, I strongly believe this mentality is at the center of our mission, helping people come and see God so they know what it is like to have a relationship with Him. In order to do that, we need to be at places where we are poured out and relying fully on God. Because giving ourselves in that manner can be completely draining if we are not allowing the Spirit to guide our steps. I know I can be guilty of this. I can get to places where I'm going and going and I end up in an unhealthy place because I was trying to do it all on my own strength. This is not what Jesus wants from us. So how do we get to a place where we have a balance and can give ourselves in a consistent manner? Let's read on. Luke chapter 9, verse 3. He told them, take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, Leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Jesus gave them a purpose, and then he gave them directions on how to accomplish what he had asked them to do. The first direction is to take nothing for the journey. To me, this is interesting. Because this wasn't always the direction that was given when being sent out. In fact, Luke chapter 22 verse 36 tells us, He said to them, But now, if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. So why, in Luke 9, was the direction for the disciples to take nothing? I believe the message Jesus wanted them to learn was to be fully reliant on God. 
Think about it in today's context. What if Jesus told you, I want you to go out to different cities and spread the good news about Jesus? Then he says, don't bring your phone or wallet. No GPS or cars either. Don't pack an overnight bag, but a toothbrush is okay. What would that be like for you? I bet for the first few minutes, you'd feel a bit naked. There's a sense of security that comes with knowing you can make a call at any time for someone to come and get you. There's a sense of security that comes with knowing if things became too depressing, you can just get in your car and go home. And it's not bad to have those things available to us. But the lesson was, Jesus was trying to help them see what they needed to learn to trust him completely. He had just given them the power of the Holy Spirit. He made it clear that although he was not with them in person, he would be with them in everything they were doing. Jesus wanted them to let go and let God be in control. How good are we at giving God control of our lives? Sometimes I don't think we realize how harmful holding on to distractions are for our faith. I have three amazing daughters that I am completely in love with. When all of them were babies, as a way to help them sleep, they each had pacifiers to suck on as a, a way to soothe them. As each one of them got older, we began to wean them off the pacifiers because we did not want them to become dependent on them. There was also another reason we began the process of weaning them off. Because we knew that if they continued to use the pacifier for long periods of time, it would start to impact how their teeth grew in and could cause long-term damage. If we weren't careful, something that brought them comfort could eventually be the very thing that wrecked havoc on their lives. So because we loved our daughters, we started to remove the pacifiers from the picture. The first few nights were so difficult. They would cry uncontrollably because they had lost that sense of security. But after a while, it became normal with them to sleep without one. They had to learn to be uncomfortable for a little bit so they would be healthier in the long run. I am convinced that this is true for us as well. There will be times in our lives where we will have to be uncomfortable so that we can learn to trust God a little bit more each day. It is certainly not easy, but can be exactly what we need as we are learning to see the Spirit more clearly on a regular basis. The disciples ultimately decided to trust God and to trust in the plan before them. Then we see this response in Luke chapter 9 and verse 10. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed healing. The disciples came back and reported everything that had happened. I'm sure there were some life-changing stories that were shared. Then look what Jesus does. He went right back to work. Jesus and the disciples had a time of debriefing. They pulled away from the busyness of life and talked about how God worked miracles. People heard where they were, and Jesus with the disciples went back to helping people. As I read this passage, one thing I thought about was how easy it is to be content when we've done one thing right. It's like we can get to places where we become spiritually content because we live for God for one day. Jesus acknowledges the good that had happened, but then showed them there was still work to be done. I think a good illustration for this is like someone who is involved in AA or Alcoholics Anonymous. There are different milestones they have on their journey to sobriety. For different amounts of time that pass with them being sober, they acknowledge and they celebrate. It's very good. 
But after those times of recognition, they don't stop the work. They still go to meetings, they still talk to people, they still make every effort to stay on the path on their journey. The decision to keep persevering is noteworthy and should be recognized. Spiritually speaking, there will always be work left to be done. That doesn't mean we shouldn't take a beat and celebrate what God has done. In fact, many of us do this once a year as we celebrate our spiritual birthdays or spurth days, recognizing the day we made Jesus Lord of our lives. We should celebrate these moments, but at the same time, make sure we don't take our eyes off of Jesus. As we close, I want to leave all of you with some directions. First, I want you to take some time to start considering what extra baggage you're carrying spiritually. How might these distractions be pulling you away from giving yourselves completely to God? Second, I want you to take a few moments to think of the victories God has brought to your life. What are times where God brought you peace in moments of chaos? And finally, I want you to think about the needs of the people where God has you. What might they benefit from knowing God personally? Taking the time to step back, breathe, and see God will be the very thing that helps you see where God is leading you to go. I pray that in moments where seeing God clearly is difficult, you can always remember to let go and let God. Amen.